the Ark of Noah. In Greek, to soma heliacon. Today, we are going to talk of the symbology of the Ark of Noah, that which in Greek is called Tosoma Heliacon, meaning the solar body of the solar man, or the body of the solar man, because to means the, soma means body, and heliacon means solar. So, is a heliacon is a word that is a compound word that means a plural. So, many bodies. So, tosoma heliacon, the solar bodies of the solar man which is the Ark of Noah. Uh, the Ark of Noah hides the secrets of the self-realization of the being. The secret of Tantra, which is hidden in different uh, uh, verses in the Bible and uh, we need to know a lot of alchemy and Kabbalah in order to understand what is the Ark of Noah. To begin, we have to state that for us the Gnostics, we study two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is Gnosis, because knowledge in Hebrew is that, and in Greek is Gnosis. So, behold here, two trees which are mentioned, of course, in the book of Genesis, written by Moses. And uh, so when we talk about the Ark of Noah, we talk about wood. And any type of wood comes from a tree. But a tree related with the Ark of Noah is not a three-dimensional tree, as many people think. And we are going to enter into this symbolism in order to understand that the Ark itself is a body, is a human body in different stages. To begin, let me explain about certain uh, statement that is written in the book of Revelation that will help us in the explanation of the Ark of Noah. It's about uh, uh, the church of Tiatira, which is the fourth church, if my memory doesn't betray me, the fourth church in the book of Revelation, in which we find this statement, I am the one that searcheth the reins between parentheses, the kidneys, and the heart, and I will give unto everyone according to their deeds. So, of course, here, this statement is very clear that the one that searches the kidneys and the heart is uh, 
that uh, energy or that force that the Bible called the Ruach Elohim or the spirit of Jehovah, which is, of course, the holy name of Chokmah in the world of Atziluth, according to Kabbalah. So, why it is stated there in the book of Revelation that Christ is the one that searcheth the kidneys and the heart and that will give unto every one of us according to our deeds? It is because the kidneys are related with a sexual potency. That's why it's called the reins. You know, the reins are those instruments that you use in order to hold the horses or your haya, as you say in Hebrew, your beasts. The power of the beast, the power of sexuality, of course, according to Taoism, can be controlled when you study the chakra of the kidneys. Above the kidneys, you find two chakras. It's called the suprarenal chakras. These chakras are white, immaculate white, when the person is sexually pure. When we say when the uh, person is uh, uh, transmuting the waters of Genesis. That's how everybody know to the lecture that we are giving that the waters of Genesis are the sexual waters, the creative waters. Because God creates to those waters. And obviously those waters are in our sexual organs. So when somebody is taking care of the sexual energy in the right way, the chakras of the kidneys above the in the suprarenal glands, because the suprarenal glands are above the kidneys. And they show an immaculate white color when the person, I, I'm repeating, uh, is taking care of his sexual energy, all their sexual energy. But when a person is very degenerated, sexually speaking, those chakras give a bloody red color. So you can understand there that why the Lord, the Christ, which is not a person but an energy, when entering into the physical body, which is that ark that eventually we have to build with the knowledge of uh, what is written in the ark of Noah, when the Lord uh, entered, I repeat, into the body, not very well, in which uh, way are we behaving, or how are we behaving, sexually speaking? So, in the organism, of course, you know that uh, the blood is the one that uh, is uh, transformed into semen within the, or through the metabolism of the physical body. Of course, the liver acts in combination with the kidneys in order to elaborate these sexual creative waters that we have in our physical body. And uh, according to our sexual behavior is how we become. Because the sexual energy is the center of activity. In an emotional center, motor center, and intellectual center. And of course, <coughs> also comes into my mind what the Master Jesus states in the Gospels, that the evil thoughts come from the heart. It says there that it is not what the men eat, what defiles the man, but what comes out from the heart. He comes again into the statement because he is the one that searches the kidneys and the heart. The quality of heart that we have, which is related with our emotions, 
depends on the activity of the kidneys. When you study the sexual transmutation, Tantra, you know that the energy travels in the spinal column as the energy of Kundalini reaching the brain and descending from the root of our nose into the heart. That's the final journey. This is the mystery of the staff of the patriarchs that are always with a curve on top of it, meaning that that curve is the head going down into the heart. So, the heart, of course, shows our desires. Because remember that in the heart, which is related with the emotional center, is also where we have the negative emotions or positive emotions. And that's precisely the point here, because most of us are emotional people. The human emotion really is difficult to control. But when we have the clues, we can control the emotional center as well as the intellectual center and the motor instinctual sexual center, which are the three brains that we have to deal with. To know this is indispensable because... Uh, Only in this way can we understand about the mysteries of the Ark of Noah. Yeah. So then, when the person is behaving positively, and the person has upright thought, upright feeling, and upright action, the quality of the sexual energy that he creates or she creates is of a high quality. And of course, that uh, develops in him or in her uh, very high level of spirituality. But when the person is not thinking in the right way, feeling in the right way, or acting sexually in the right way, that develops, as we know in the psychology, a very low level of spirituality, very materialistic. And uh, the chakras, as I said, of the kidneys show that with a bloody red color. So this is how the statement, I am the one that searches the kidneys and the heart, and I will give unto everyone according to their deeds, is precisely related with our sexual activity in our emotional center. In the heart, in the left ventricle, of our heart, we have an atom. This is a spiritual atom that cannot be found with any microscope or any surgery. Because when, it, when we say atom, means small particle of that that we call Christ in us. In esotericism, we call this atom the son of man. He's the atom nous. N-O-U-S, the atom nous. This atom nous is directly related with the solar mind or the solar man that we call here the Tosoma Helia Kong. While the inferior emotions which are related with the heart, that comes from the heart with the negative vibrations, negative feelings, of course, are related with the materialistic mind, the sensual mind that the book of Revelation called Jezebel, that called herself a prophetess. 
This Jezebel that called her hell, herself a prophetess, of course, is the animal mind that every one of us, every one of us has. But news is that only particle in the physical body that never loses contact with our monad, with our glorian, with our own particular Jehovah, as we say in Kabbalah. When we name the, uh, the, uh, the name Jehovah here, we always point at the Sephirah Chokmah. This first triangle of the tree of life, Keter, Chokmah, Binah, is the triangle of the Logos. The triangle of the cosmic Christ. Of the three primary forces of the universe. In Chokmah, which means wisdom in Hebrew, is that any related with what we call in Christianity the sun and what in Hinduism called Vishnu. And uh, among the Aztecs they call it Quetzalcoatl. It is also Osiris Ra. So this force is a uh, Universal, cosmic, and we have an atom of that cosmic force in the left ventricle of the heart, which is the atom nous, and which the Bible refers as Noah. So that's why when you read the Book of Genesis, the chapter 6, the verse 5, it's stated. And Jehovah saw that the weakness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, you see here, of his heart, was only evil continually. And it repented Jehovah that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And Jehovah said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the folds of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of Jehovah. So this is something very important. When you know alchemy, then you understand what you're reading. Because the book of Genesis is a book of alchemy. Of course, a book that is uh, that encloses a symbol that must be interpreted in seven ways. In this way, a chemical way, or microcosmic way, is precisely what we are interested in. Because we explain in different lectures about this Ark of Noah in different symbolism. But now, talking in direct relation with the physical body, we have to understand and comprehend that when that energy called Chokhmah, Christ, the cosmic Christ, enters into your body, that energy searcheth the kidneys and the heart and know your activities. Because that wisdom, that energy, is omniscient, omnipotent. So in this way, we have to understand that Christ is not a person, but an energy, a force, that is everywhere. And always enters into our bodies. And not only in the human body, in the animal bodies, plant bodies, mineral bodies. That's why the mystery of Christ is written on top of the cross of the crucified. Ingri. Ignis natura renovator integra. Latin mantra. But also it means uh, the fire, ignis, of nature, renews uh, it constantly. Of course, the fire that we are talking here 
is the astral signature of the fire. Fire that we find within the water, fire that we find within the earth, within the air. But fire is everywhere. It's energy. So, when it is written here in the book of Genesis, that Jehovah said, I will destroy man who I have created, we have to understand that that solar force is enclosed in the sexual energy. Remember that God creates, but God is not a person. God is an energy that we carry in the sexual organs. God is an energy that the animals carry in the sexual organs, that the plants carry in the pollen. God is an energy that is in the mineral kingdom as an electricity and magnetism. God is everywhere in the universe. That's why we say that every atom is a trio of matter, energy, and consciousness. But consciousness is precisely uh, uh, manifested in different levels according to the activity of the recipient. So therefore you see that when the book of Revelation states, I am the one that searches the kidneys and the heart, and I will give unto every one of you according to your deeds. It's, it's actually that energy that goes here. If you act negatively with your sexual energy and feed the desires of your heart, then the outcome of that will be what we call karma, the effect of your actions. Because that energy can create or destroy. That's why it also comes into my mind this other great uh, uh, verse of the book of Revelation. The destroyer, that is called in Greek Apollyon and in Greek Abaddon. This angel or energy, who is called the destroyer, always appears as a destroyer. It's only as a destroyer appears in the in the, uh, with Moses when he's killing all the Egyptians. Appears also here in Noah's Ark when he's going to destroy the whole earth. But we have to understand that when the Bible talks about the earth, it's not talking only about the planet earth, but about the physical body. Because every one of us, individually speaking, is a planet earth. That is what in Kabbalah is called Malkut. So when we talk about Malkut, we talk about the whole planet or the physical body. And that physical body, that's why Malkut means kingdom in Hebrew. Because it could be the mineral kingdom, the plant, the animal kingdom, or the human kingdom. That's Malkut. Of course, we have our own particular individual Malkut. And when we study Kabbalah, we know that Teva, the Ark, is a physical body. That we are in. So when our energy enters there. And then we are behaving sexually. In the negative way. Or the, the, the emotions of our heart. Are continually making thoughts. In order to do evil. When you see there. How that Jehovah. Is entering and discovering. That the whole. Humanity in this day and age. Is a Time in the time of Noah, which was the Atlantis or the Atlantean civilization, of course, humanity was in the age of Kali Yuga. And everybody, of course, was uh, behaving in their own way, in the, the three brains. This is how we have to understand it. How Jehovah descends and sees inside of us our own iniquity. Because people think that it's from outside there is a God there in the clouds throwing lightnings and thunders against this and uh, uh, kind of humanity. 
But we have to understand that uh, Jehovah, of course, is yod He bab He, and encloses the mystery of duality. Yod, the man. He, the woman. Bab, the phallus. He, again, the uterus. That's the meaning of yod He bab He, Jehovah. Because the two polarities, the forces that create above and below, but it depends how we utilize those forces in us, the, the outcome of our life, of our destiny. So, this is how we understand then that uh, Jehovah descends and sees that everything, uh, every imagination of the thoughts of the, of, of the heart of man was only evil continually. And when says that he repented that he had made man on the earth and he gave him in his heart and I will destroy that humanity, we have to understand that uh, is the end of Kali Yuga. We had and we gave many lectures before explaining that uh, in every cycle of manifestation, every soul has 108 lives. When they finish the 108th life, and then devolution starts. And this is how humanity is destroyed within the abyss, within the nine layers of the earth, which are uh, explained in Kabbalah as klipos, which is the dissension of uh, souls into the abyss, into the Tartarus, or Inferno, as you said, which is the Latin word Infernus, which means inferior dimensions. Of course, before entering into the abyss, the devolution starts manifesting itself in the physical body. As you see now in this... Uh, uh, Planet Earth, on the surface of the Earth, you see only devolution, degeneration, everywhere. Sexually speaking, of course, that is the root of everything. And then the rest. So, in synthesis, all of us are sentenced to the second death. The second death is precisely this entering into the abyss in order to return to the original chaos in which all the vehicles of that soul will be disintegrated. That that we call ego. So, when that stage enters into humanity, when everybody is really going down into the abyss, then a great avatar appears a great messenger that starts giving the clues in order for us to avoid the falling into the abyss and to enter into the ark which in many other lectures we said ark also comes from arcanum which is a secret, a mystery which is also uh, given in code always in the past but that at the end of Kali Yuga, or the Dark Age, humanity received it very clear. In order to, as I, uh, I repeat, in order to avoid to fall into the abyss. And of course, those clues have to be elaborated or worked by Nus, by Noah. Because each one of us has his own particular Noah in his heart. That's why, if right now, Chokmah, the Christ, as an angel descends into your, your body and every single body of the people of the earth, you will find a lot of iniquity. As you see, this uh, society, this civilization is really very degenerated in all the levels. But the only good thing that the Lord will find in us will be the atom nous, which never loses its purity. And only through that atom is how we can work by developing that son of man, 
As I said, because Aratumnus is called the Son of Man. And of course, for that, in the verse 8, the Bible says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of Jehovah. So that Aratumnus found grace in the eyes of Chokhmah, the second sephira of the Holy Trinity, or the three primary forces. That's the only thing. That's why we always say that uh, compassion is the first virtue that we have to, to work. And that compassion should be in the beginning towards our own particular soul. And then to the rest of humanity. Because there are many people that have compassion to other souls, meanwhile they are degenerating themselves. And that's stupid. Compassion, charity begins in house, in our own house, and then outside. That's sacrifice. So the atom news is the one that receives the doctrine. And the atom news is related with the power of intuition. This is why it says that we have to transform our mind in intuitive mind. Because we have the sensual mind very developed. The mind that reason, the intellectual mind. But the intuitive mind has to be developed. And that's only possible by putting in activity the consciousness. And by annihilating the ego that we have in abundance. So, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with Elohim. So you see there, a just man, in Gnosticism we always explain that Nus is a mind, an intuitive mind. When they say that Noah was a just man, or a just mind, because the man, you know, in English, is a human being, and comes from the word manas, which means mind. There's another word that's called manu. It's someone that has a solar mind. So, we will say it was to a state that there are two types of minds. The sensual mind, the concrete mind, which is animal, and the intuitive mind, which is nous. That nous, which is written here in the Bible, is Noah, the man that is always walking with Elohim. Okay, and which are these Elohim? You see, I just fixed this, what I printed from uh, the internet. But in the internet you find, and the Lord said, and the Lord says, and the Lord says, and the Lord says, right? But in Hebrew, they say, no, they say the Lord. Sometimes it says Jehovah, sometimes it says Elohim. You have to understand the Hebrew in order to understand what you're reading. When it says there that Noah walked with Elohim, he's pointing the Elohim, which means the gods and goddesses. Because Elohim is a plural word. El is God, masculine. Eloah is goddess in Hebrew. So Elohim, I am at the end, is a plural word, which means many. So it's not as many translators of the Bible uh, translate as God, singular. Elohim means gods and goddesses. So it's a legion of beings that are self-realized, that in the past performed the alchemical work that we are explaining here. So therefore they became perfect. They became Elohim. So all of us had the potentiality of becoming Elohim, or gods and goddesses. That depends on how we manage the force of Chokmah in our body, the force of Christ, of Inri in ourselves. And that's why it's written that Noah uh, uh, 
begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japhet. Many times we always explain that only through the atom news we can rise the Kundalini. Because the fires of the Kundalini, which are sexual, are controlled by the fires of news. People think that the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Kundalini, which rises in the spinal column, is a mechanical fire. It could be awakened just by accident. But they ignore that the three primary forces of the universe are omniscient, intelligent forces. You cannot awake the Kundalini if you don't work with the fires of the heart, with your atom nus, as is written there. Only Noah can engender Shem, Ham, and Hafet, which are three bodies. Here we are explaining, as I repeat, alchemically, the book of Genesis. Before we were talking about the races or the Shemites. But now we are not going to talk about the Shemites. We are talking about Shem which represents the solar bodies that we have to build. Because the true man, the authentic human being, beyond the physical body, has the astral body, the mental body, and the causal body. The astral body is a sidereal body with which you project yourself astrally. People uh, project in the astral plane with uh, Kama Rupa, body of desires, with the ego. Many people can do that, but uh, to build an astral body is a luxury that only a few know how to, to have it. By knowing the secret of Tantra is how we develop the astral body. And the mental solar body, which is called, I, as I say in many lectures, Ilaja, the solar mind. And Tifereth, which is, of course, the causal body. These are the bodies that we are talking here, you know. Hod, Netza, and Tifereth are the three solar bodies that we have to build within. And those are precisely the three suns of Noah, of the atom Nus, the outcome of Nus. So, this is why it's written there that uh, Noah engendered or begat those three sons. In other words, if you want to belong to the ark of Noah or to the new generation, or the sixth root race that is coming. And many prophecies state that this Aryan race will be destroyed. In, in a new humanity comes, will be engendered. In order to, for that humanity to, to appear, we need to build the three sons of Noah within. This is very important to understand. Because everything that we read in the Bible is going towards our psyche. Astral solar body, mental solar body, and causal solar body. With those bodies, we are capable of traveling up and down into the tree of life, which are the ten sephiroth. Because we need vehicles in order to enter into a study the laws of nature and the laws of the cosmos within the superior dimensions of nature. Here, in this physical world, we only have a physical body. And with the physical body, we scarcely study only the three-dimensional world. With the physical body, through the five senses, we hear theories, dogmas, beliefs, knowledge. And the only way in order to prove that, that we are listening is by creating within us the superior bodies. Just like that. But we have to know the procedure, the way in which you have to do it. And that's why it is written after that that the earth also was corrupt before Elohim, and the earth was filled with violence. Let us read the chapter, or the, the verse 13. 
And Elohim said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Reeds shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. This is a very alchemical statement. If you read that literally, then you might think that you will find this gopher, gopher tree in order to cut it and then to make an ark physically with wood. But as I stated in the beginning, we the Gnostics are interested in only two trees. The tree of life, which is the Kabbalah, and the tree of good and evil, or the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life is the Kabbalah, and the tree of good and evil is the sexual potency. That's why in the book of Popol Vuh of the Mayans, it's stated that the gods made men with wood, or made men of wood. And after made them there with wood, they fused them with divinity. So we will say that we are a type of persons made of wood, symbolically, alchemically speaking. That wood, of course, is the wood of the tree of good and evil of knowledge, which is sexuality. Simple. And, of course, <coughs> gopher wood. Gopher is ready with sulfur. You see? Sulfur wood, or I said resin wood, that's why many translators of the Bible, they think that is a type of pine with which the ark was made of, physically speaking. We're trying to, to explain about the wood. But really the wood is that element that you use uh, often in order to make fire. When you want to make fire, a bonfire, you put a lot of wood, and then the, from the wood comes the fire, comes the gopher, the sulfur. So when it's stated there that you have to make an ark, with gopher wood, or gopher wood, whatever, it is clearly t telling you that you had to make an ark, you had to make your vehicles with your sexual energy, with your sulfur, with your fire, with your sexual fire, in other words. And it comes into my mind also about other uh, uh, statements in Aztec mythology. According to the Aztecs, the ones that invented fire were a man and a woman, a couple. Better said, not invented. They discovered the fire because the fire is not invented. The fire was there always. Hmm. Of course, and that bring, bring us, you know, the man and the woman bring us into our mind the cross with its two beams, the vertical and the horizontal. The vertical beam of the cross is the sexual phallus. And the horizontal is the feminine vagina. United, this is how you make fire. That's why it is written in the top of the cross, in re. Ignis natura renovator integra. The fire renews nature constantly. The tantra, hidden in those symbolisms. So... To make an ark with gopher wood is precisely the mysteries of Tantra. And that's how you have to pitch it. The pitch is, of course, a distillation of elements in order to cover for the water and all going into the ark. What waters are we talking here? Remember that in this moment, we are really in a great flood of degeneration. The waters are polluted. When you see the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, are really, it's very rare to find now a clean water. And why are the waters polluted? Because our own particular waters are also polluted. Our own sexual waters. So to make a pitch, or to pitch the ark, is an alchemical statement that you have to destillate 
to distill the sexual matter in order to liberate the sulfur. That is to pitch it inside and outside, but that is a process of tantra, alchemy, that only can be performed between a man and a woman. By following the procedures. That's the mystery. We have to stop, if we are intelligent, of looking that ark in Mount Ararat. As it's written there that the ark rested in the Mount Ararat. We have to understand that that Mount, famous Mount Ararat is precisely the top of our head. Hmm? The pineal gland. Because the sexual fire of the Kundalini has to rise from the sexual organs up to the spinal column to the pineal gland. And that's why it's written Rooms shall thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. When you said rooms it's really not rooms, it's reeds. Because in Hebrew, that word is similar to rooms. Reeds. R-E-E-D-S. Reeds. Because that is the mystery of the spinal column. With reeds. How many reeds do we need in order to make that arc? Only two. No more. The spinal reed of the man and the spinal reed of the woman. That's it. That's enough. With that we make the big ark. And we build those bodies that we are talking about. And of course. In order to pitch it. It's a long work. It's just written. In alchemy. Esotericism. That the whole work has to be performed at least. In 40 years. 40 years of very serious work of alchemy. Of course, could be more. But in the Bible, this is stated, 40 days of the great flood. 40 is the number of Mem. In Kabbalah, the Hebrew letters which are or were delivered by the angel Metraton are the symbol of uh, the different alchemical Kabbalistic elements that we have to comprehend. So the letter Mem, which is M, the letter M or Mem, has a value of 40 and symbolizes water. So, of course, we are talking about the waters of Genesis. When it is stated that this humanity will be destroyed by the waters, it is clear. Right now, this humanity is being destroyed by the waters. All of those sexual diseases that are appearing everywhere, like AIDS, are coming because of the polluted waters. You know that. Many species of human beings are being annihilated by AIDS. But not only those type of diseases, because the sexual degeneration is really originating different diseases in the physical body. And humanity is dying. And the, and the problem here is that humanity ignores that its own salvation lies in the same sexual energy. If humanity keeps manifesting or doing the sexual act or this behaving uh, uh, sexually in the way that they are behaving, they will des be destroyed. Not only by themselves, but also by the forces of the elements. Because we know very well that the sexual energy is connected to the elements of nature. When you study alchemy and Kabbalah, you study how the elements of nature are related with the sexual energy. And of course, if you, or the, if humanity keeps using the sexual energy in the wrong way, it will descend into the abyss. Because there are two ways, or two humanities that develop according to the tree of life. From Malkut above, the solar humanity, 
the Ark of Noah. That is called Tosoma Heliacon. But from what could be law, Clipoth, the fornicator humanity, which develops in the infradimensions after the physical plane is clean. There in Clipoth, you find the two spheres of Lilith and Nahema. Nahema is the mother of adultery and fornication. Lilith is the mother of lesbianism, homosexuality, and any type of sexual degeneration. And that humanity develops in Clipoth. When that humanity is very uh, degenerated, then the abyss surfaces on the earth as it is right now, surfacing the three-dimensional world of Malkut. And you see that the laws of the abyss are established in the three-dimensional world. Now we have to do super efforts in order to bring the superior laws into Malkut, into our physical body, and only Noah can do that. Because Noah, the atom, was, the atom nous in the left vertical of the heart, walk with the Elohim. The Elohim are the symbol of all the monads that belong to the different sephirath of the tree of life. If you study the four worlds of Kabbalah, you will find all of those Elohim, which the Bible calls angels, archangels, principalities, thrones, cherubim, seraphims, etc., etc. So, and this is the fashion which you shall make it of. The length of arc of the ark shall be 300 cubits. So the length of the ark is 300 cubits. You have then to know what is 300. What is the number 300? It's related with the letter Shin. Shin is a letter that uh, in Hebrew is a hieroglyphic. The three that has like a three, uh, how do you call three uh, wicks, right? With a one, one base. These three weeks are the symbol of the Holy Trinity. Huh? Let us shin. Actually, the word Israel is written with shin. It shouldn't be Israel. It should be Israel. And in Hebrew, in order to say it man, you said ish. You put the letter shin. And in order to say it woman, you said isha. Because they are the two polarities of the sexual energy. So you have to make the arc 300 cubits length. It means that you have to work with the three primary forces. Keter, Chokmah, Bina, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Brahma, Binu, Shiva. The three primary forces of the universe. How are you going to work with it? Well, see your, the length of your body. We have three nervous systems. And when we study this three nervous system, we see how the three nervous systems are related with the, from the top of your head to your feet. The central nervous system, which is also called the cerebrum spinal nervous system, is a vehicle of the first primary force called the father. The grand sympathetic nervous system, which is related with the emotional center here in the heart, is a vehicle of the sun. Chokmah. And the parasympathetic nervous system, which is related with the sexual active energy, is also called vagus. This is precisely the length. If, we, if you want to search in your body, where are you having that or those three fires of the letter Shin? But everybody carries it in the three nervous systems. From above, the three primary forces descend into the physical body. And you have in your central nervous system, the father, as an energy. And the son, in the heart, in the grand sympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic, the Holy Spirit, which is always related with the sexual energy. In other words, it is a stating 
that the length of your work of that ark that you are going to build with your tantric work has to be related with three factors. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or the three primary forces, the three logos. First logos, second logos, third logos. Logos means word. Or in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The vibration of the energy. So you have to work with your three brains. You have to work with your intellectual brain, with your emotional brain, and with your motor, instinctual, sexual brain. That's precisely the psychological work of the Ark of Noah. That's the length. And of course, you have to comprehend that when you go and talk about the third nervous system, which is related with the Holy Spirit, which is related with the sexual, motor, instinctual brain, that brain is always divided, split, two forces. And this is precisely what you see in alchemy. Because if you see, for instance, men and women, brain, no difference. Heart, no difference. Sex, a big difference. Because the sexual energy is divided. Of course, the sexual energy is what makes the body of the female as well the body of the male. So we said male and female. But really, the origin of male and female is the sexual energy. You know, it's in this day and age, there's no doubt about it. So, when you go down there into the sexual organs, and then you have to talk in duality. And this is how you have to comprehend. The sexual energy in the physical body, in that arc that we are talking here, is divided in two. And this is what we call in alchemy, Mercury. Mercury. Remember that the sulfur, that fire that comes from above in the three nervous system, transforms itself into Mercury. That's why it is said that Mercury is the messenger of the gods. That Mercury, of course, in the sexual organs, is called brute Mercury. As you find it. Gnostically we said semen. For us the Gnostics. The woman has semen. And the man has semen as well. Of course the semen in woman is feminine. It's called veria. And the, and the man is masculine. So this semen. Is a brute mercury. With which. You know. We multiply physically. Of course, we the Gnostics know that the brute mercury is indispensable. We, but we have to transmute it. We have to transform that mercury. And this is precisely what we read after that in the Bible that states A window shall thou make to the ark and in a cubic shall thou finish it. Above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third studies shalt thou make it. The width of the ark Or the breath is what you said, right? The the bre- the bre- the, bre- the breath, fifty cubics. The width. I cannot read that word very well. It says there's breath. The breath of the ark, fifty cubics. Fifty is the letter nun, which in English is the letter n. Nun, according to alchemy. Is a letter that uh, symbolizes fish. And that's why when you write 
in Hebrew, the word Noah. In English, you write it with, with uh, four letters. But in Hebrew, you don't find vowels. It's only two letters. The letter Nun and the letter He. Or He. That's the word Noah. The letter N or Nun means fish. And the letter He is a symbol of Malkut. The physical body. In other words, the atom nus of the heart has to control the fish. The noon, which is in the sexual organs. That fish is called sperm in the man. And in the woman, ovum. Both are fish. That has to trans be transformed in the physical body. In the hay, which is malkut. That's why I said the width symbolizes also the Levi Leviathan. You know the Leviathan? Or what also is also called, the letter Nun is related with the Leviathan and with all, all that other all forces which call Behemoth. So the Leviathan, of course, is the sexual potency in a human organism. The width is because we have to know how to walk with that force, with the right foot and the left foot. We have to know how to apply that energy in the very sexual act. Because that energy works when we perform the cross. Physically speaking, when you enter a woman in a sexual act as a man... You perform the cross. And the noon, the sperm, will create a new body. Of course, in the animal generation. But here, when we are talking about alchemy, Gnosticism, we have to know how to create Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Astral, mental, and causal solar bodies. is what we want. Because those are the generation of Noah, the atom news that we need. We don't need to create uh, children in the physical world or, or to hear a lecture and learn how to create it. Everybody knows how to do that. But in order to create these two children of Noah, we had to learn how to transmute the brute mercury, the semen itself, how to transform the sperm into energy. Or in other words, how to liberate the energy from that matter. And that's only possible in Tantra, in a sexual act. Because this is how the gopher wood works. The gopher wood, the sulfuric wood, starts making fire. And the couple start, of course, managing the sexual fire of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the creative of life. Or creator of life. So what we need is to liberate the soul of the mercury. You see? It's called the vapors from that water. When you put that water to boil in a fire, the vapors are rising until the water disappears from the container. Same thing happens when you apply alchemy, the soul of the mercury is liberated from the brute mercury. And that soul of the mercury is what rises in what in Hinduism calls Ida and Pingala. Through the spinal column or through the reed, which you are making the ark. Ida and Pingala are called in the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve. Yin Yang. So two polarities. We had to understand, you know, to fall into mistake of thinking that Adam and Eve was a man and a woman. Everything is symbolic. It's alchemy. Those two polarities are in our spinal column. And when a man and a woman connect sexually, they liberate the soul of the mercury. This is the second type of mercury. That we need to liberate. Remember, I repeat, Mercury is a messenger of the gods. 
Unfortunately, humanity ignores this. And because it's sexually degenerated, humanity created another type of mercury, which is called dry mercury. What is the dry mercury? The dry mercury is that what we call ego. Psychological entities that shouldn't exist within. Lust, anger, pride, vanity, laziness, gluttony, etc., etc., etc. Those elements are called dry mercury. Which alchemically should be destroyed, annihilated, by knowing the procedure. But that is a procedure that we explain in other lectures. Now we are going to only talking about the soul of the Mercury, which we need to liberate. The soul of the Mercury is liberated when the couple, in the sexual act, avoid the spasm, the abominable orgasm of the animals. Because every type of animal fornicates. Which is the orgasm or the spasm. That is n that's natural in the animal kingdom. But if we want to reach the human level, we have to renounce the animal level. Or what we call the animal generation. Because remember that it's written. Noah was good in its generations or his generations. Those generations are, of course, the outcome of the soul of the Mercury. So, that's only possible by avoiding a repeat spasm. But you have to know how to sublimate, how to liberate that soul. To transform the matter into energy in the very sexual act. As in the common and ordinary sexual act, when the man and the woman are sexually united, and they reach the spasm or the orgasm of the animals, and then they mixed the sperm and the ovum. As you know, eventually becomes a, a child in the physical plane. But that's the, the mixture of the brute mercury. In alchemy, the generations of Noah are not related with the combination of the brute mercury. Because anybody can do that. What we want is the combination of the soul of the Mercury. And that's precisely the work of Noah in the heart. That's why when you are performing this transmutation, you have to concentrate in your heart. And your divine father and divine mother. Or as the commandment states, you have to honor your father and your mother. That father is Jah, and that mother is Hava. Which united means Yod Hava, Jehovah, in other words, inside, not outside. So when you honor your father and your mother in the sexual act, and then you are uniting <coughs> the soul of the Mercury, and that's precisely the fire that we're talking here. That's the gopher wood, the sulfuric wood. That is. The element that you need in order to build the ark within. If you don't liberate that sulfur, the soul of the mercury, uh, you cannot build the ark within. You cannot be saved from the waters of degeneration or the abyss in other words. So then, the union of the soul of the Mercury of the woman with the soul of the Mercury of the man in the sexual act through the stand, the extension, I mean, of 40 years, you know, of work because it's mem, 40 years. doesn't mean that uh, you are going to perform this in one day with one woman or tomorrow I say, oh, well, maybe with this other one and in committing adultery, you don't make anything. Because we are talking here about polarities. This is scientific polarities. If you unite two negative wires with one, you make a short circuit. Or two positives with one negative, 
you make another short circuit. If you put three, more obvious. So you need only one wire positive and another wire negative in order to build what we have to build. So the soul of the mercury in that way is cross. When the soul of the mercury of the woman and the man are cross in the sexual act, eventually with time and, by, and guided by the fires of the heart, another third mercury awakes which is the mercury that is fecundated by the sulfur. It's called fecundated mercury. This fecundated mercury is what in the Hindustan or India is called Kundalini. Or what in the Bible is called the energy of the Holy Spirit. Or the energy of Jehovah. Which is hidden within the animal substance called semen. That's why it says that you have to put in the ark two pairs of impure animals, which means haya in Hebrew. Haya is the sexual potency. That's why in Kabbalah, the holy name of God in Yesod, which is the sexual organs, is Shaddai el Hai, the Almighty God is the tra uh, translation. The Almighty God, Shaddai el Hai, is precisely the sexual potency of the beast that we have in the sexual organs, the semen itself, the animal substance. Two, because you need the man and the woman united. Hmm? Hmm? But we have too many impure elements there because we have a lot of lust lust is animal but we have not only one type of lust many type of lust and to liberate that higher that fire that life from every impure element that we have within especially a work of alchemy those animal elements that we have within which are impure are many a lot lust Anger, greed, pride, laziness, gluttony, etc., etc. I know it's on. So then, you see there that in order to collect all the impure animals and to put it into the ark, that's a work of alchemy. It's a long work. It doesn't mean that people think that they have to go outside and to get a couple of lions, a couple of giraffes, well, a couple of dinosaurs will be enough for that, that ark, in order to sink the ark into the ocean. But we're talking here about symbolism, alchemical symbolism. Those couple of impure animals are within us. Everyone carries that within. And we need to transform, to transmute Lust into chastity, pride into humbleness, humility, anger into sweetness, greed into philanthropy, and every type of defect has to be transformed, all those animals they have within. But it is written also, and seven of the pure animals, or seven of the pure haya. That pure haya is related with the seven sephirot above. Pure elements that we need to bring into the ark as well. To bring these seven elements in the ark implies a creation. Because remember that not only of the bread, the, the man lives alone, but for every word that comes from the, word, uh, the mouth of God, so all the forces from above, from the Elohim, needs to be brought into our sexual act. And this is a process of alchemy. Because in synthesis, a perfect man has seven bodies. And a perfect woman has also seven bodies. The physical body, called Malkut, 
the vital body, which is the superior part of the physical body, which is called the ethereal body, is yesod. Above it, we have the astral body, which is hod. The mental body, which is netzah. The causal body, which is tiferet. The beautic body, which is geburah. And the spiritual body, which is hesed. Sometimes called Gedula. So that is the seven bodies. Hesed, Gebura, Tiferet, Netzah, Hold, Yesod, and Malkut. Physical body, vital body, astral body, mental body, causal body, beautic body, spiritual body. Those are seven. Those are the seven that you have to unite. Seven and seven, the woman and the man, fourteen. Plus the two impurities down there, which are related with their Ida and Pingala, because down there in the sexual act, as we stated, we are divided into the two polarities, the two forces. This is why we call Yolhe Bavhe. So 14 plus 4 is 18, which makes the word Haya, life, in Kabbalah, in Hebrew. So those are the elements, alchemical. That we have to put in the ark by working with mem. And of course, it is stated in the in the Bible that uh, the ark has to have three studies or three levels. Here in the physical world, we are in the world of Asia. The world of action and matter, which is called Malkut. But above it, we have three levels, or three worlds, which in Kabbalah are called Atilut, Bria, and Yetzirah. Above Asia, we find Yetzirah. Above Yetzirah, we have Bria. And above Bria, we have Atilut. Those are the three stories that, according to the Kabbalistic statements in the Bible, the ark has to be built. In other words, it is called the Adam Kadmon, the heavenly man. When the ark is done, is created, then that creature is capable of traveling in all dimensions, in all the worlds of Kabbalah, and knowing and talking with the Elohim. Because remember that is written. That Noah walk with the Elohim. But here in this physical world, we talk about the Elohim, the gods and goddesses, or the angels, etc. But for some people, that is just an illusion, a theory, a dogma. Who knows if the angels exist? But when you build the three children of Noah within you, then you don't need to believe in anything. Because you can talk, as we are talking here, you are listening to me and I'm talking to you, and you don't believe in me. I mean that I exist because I am in front of you. It's, I am pretty obvious that I'm in front of you and you are in front of me. So when you build the three children of Noah inside of you, you're in contact with the angels, with the Elohim. And you know that they exist. Not because somebody said it or because the Bible talks about it or because all the sacred book talks about it. It's because you are talking with them. And you are, of course, having a, an interaction with those Elohim, thanks to your Nus, to your Noah. So that's precisely the height that the Ark has to have. Because when you study Kabbalah, you know that the height of the three worlds are related with three triangles that you show here. Asia, Malkut, is a physical body. And that's why when a Kabbalist says, go and teach to the seven churches of Asia. People think that they're talking about the continent, Asia. Those seven chakras, or seven churches, are uh, related with the reed, with the Kundalini. The seven chakras that are being studied in Hinduism, in the, the book of Revelation called seven churches. Magnetic centers that you develop in your spinal column, in your reed. So when a man and woman are united, seven and seven as well, fourteen, two and two, that's the mystery of the ark. 
simple when you know alchemy and Kabbalah. And this is how the great flood comes and you are saved because you are inside of you, within, <coughs> out of the generation. But you have to clean yourself. And that's a work, of course, that I have to perform, and I said, in 40 years. Working with the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. The annihilation of the ego, which is in relation with the crawl that Noah sends out of the ark. A process in which we call it a process of putrefaction. And where you have to clean yourself, annihilate your ego. And the procedure in order to annihilate the ego is given in many lectures already, in many books. But that is in combination with the Ark of Noah. Inside of you, you are working with your own animals, in pure elements, and pure elements. That's precisely the mystery. And the window that has to open here on top of the Ark is in relation with the letter Aleph, which is precisely clairvoyance. Or the power of sin, not only physically, but internally. Until you are completely awakened. Of course, the most important about the different mercuries that I talk to you is the fecundated mercury. Because the soul of the mercury could be liberated even if you are single by doing exercises of pranayama and how the energy rises to the up in galao, Adam and Eve in the spinal column to your brain, to your heart. But the fecundated mercury is only possible to awaken by the sexual contact. And that mercury is the one that creates Shem, Ham, and Japhet, the three children of Noah, inside. That is the generation that comes from the fecundated mercury, which we call the astral solar body, the mental solar body, and the causal solar body. So you understand now what is the Ark of Noah? It's a work of alchemy. And of course, this mystery was taught in Atlantis, to the people that were at that time degenerated as we in this time are degenerated. If you want not to be in the abyss, not to fall into the abyss by the devolution of the mechanical forces of nature, well, the only answer for that in order to be liberated is noose. And that noose is what is called in the Bible, in the Gospels, the Son of Man. The knowledge of the Son of Man that comes in the clouds of mystery. This is the Son of Man that you need to liberate. Only the Son of Man can liberate you from the degeneration in which we are already in. Do you have questions? Yes. Uh, how, how important is the imagination when you're transmuting, especially when you both um, as a single person and uh, more importantly as a married couple? Of course, the imagination is what we were explaining here. The same clairvoyance. You know? Imagination and clairvoyance is the same thing. Imagination comes from the word image. Now, for instance, I'm receiving your image into my eyes. And that's why I know who you are. When I see a tree, I receive the image of the tree. So what I have in my brain are the images of the elements which are outside. So the third eye capture also images that are not related with the three-dimensional world, but to the other superior dimensions or inferior dimensions. And that's what we call imagination. So inside of us, we have the vital body, which is related with the four dimension. And the channels through which the energy rises are semi-ethereal, semi-physical. So in order for you to see that, you have to use your imagination. That's why there are many uh, pictures, many ways 
to see that by seeing first a picture of it or, 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 or paint of it. The best way, of course, is to meditate and concentrate and see it in your body. That's the best. So when you see it in your body with your imagination in meditation, and then you easily can visualize it when you are doing your transmutation as a single or in tantra. He didn't curse any one of them. He cursed only the son of one of them. Why did Noah curse one of his sons, he says. But if you read the Bible, uh, Noah didn't curse one of his sons. He cursed one of the sons of his son. I believe he is the son of Ham, which is called Cana Canaan. I don't remember very well because I don't memorize the Bible. But I remember that I read it and of course uh, Ham represents the, the body, the astral body which is directly related with the body of desires. When you create the astral solar body which is Ham and you utilize it in the wrong way and obviously you create uh, desire. Desire is damned with the animal. You cannot be in the new generation, in the new land, with desires. We will say that that is a wrong generation after being born again. That's the symbol. Read carefully the Bible. You will see that is not one of the sons, but one, the son of one of his sons. After he gets uh, drunk, inebriated, Mm -hmm. Symbol of transmutation as well. The inebriation with the wine of life or the, or the wine of the transubstantiation. Uh, it seems like a lot of couples stay together just for the alchemy, right? Just like in regular uh, society, a lot of parents stay together for the children. But if there's no love in a relationship, right, and you're performing alchemy, right, is there is that energy still there? Is that energy still building? But remember again, as we stated in the beginning, the atom nous, Noah, in the left ventricle of the heart, according to alchemy, according to Genesis, is the one that builds its generations. So if you are there and it's not because of nous, it's not because you are walking with God. Because remember that Noah is the one that walk with the Elohim. With his own particular Jehovah. But you are doing the sexual act there without love. So there is no news there. There is no Noah. It's just animal. That's why a perfect matrimony has to be uh, performed between two uh, people, men and women, that love each other. Not only physical, but also emotionally, mentally, and volitionally. The body of will. That's part of the study. Relationships throughout you, you talk about 40 years, you know. Yeah, of course, you, you have to find, you have to find the, the, the couple that you will love. Because love is felt in the heart, not in the mind. When you feel here a lot of love with your couple, that means that that is the one that with whom you have to walk with the Elohim. Because there is the atom news, the one that is gone. If you are in a sexual act and you don't feel anything in your heart for the one that is with you, and then what are you doing? It's love. Remember that God is love. It's that uh, atom news. It's chokhmah. That's why chokhmah, which is the second sephirah, is called the sun. And it's called love. The father is wisdom. The son is love. And the Holy Spirit, Bina, is the sexual energy. But the sexual energy, Kundalini, the sexual energy of the Holy Spirit, rises in the spinal column only through the merits of our heart. So the heart is controlling those fires. 
So you have to judge your psyche, your mind, etc., before going into a couple and going to make tantra. Do you really love that person, or you are just doing it for curiosity to see what happens? Because if noose is not there, Kundalini will not awake. So you need to be serious there. Yeah? Why does the dove return to the olive branch? What? Why does the dove return to the olive branch? Well, the olive branch obviously is the symbol of victory. The olive uh, is a symbol, you know, the, the tree that where you make uh, olive oil. And that uh, olive oil is a symbol of transmutation. If you read it in many books in the Old Testament, they all would put a symbol of the two witnesses, right? The two olive branches that poured oil, or golden oil, in the temple, which is the physical body. So the two olive branches that rises in the spinal column are precisely uh, the symbol of the olive branch. And uh, the dove is a symbol of the energy of the Holy Spirit that rises in the spinal column. That dove has to rise as an energy, which is the symbol of purity, white dove. The symbol of the white dove is precisely the one that came from heaven and in the baptism of Jesus. When he was on the waters also, you see, everything is in relation with that transmutation. So, if that dove brings an olive branch in his beak, means that you are triumphant in your sexual alchemy. Well, the Master Samael did his work uh, in less than four years because he did it uh, in other lives, in other Maha Mambantaras. And because he was assisted since he was the avatar. And he did the work, so he knew it. It was not the first time that he was doing it. For us, I said, if we do it every day, 40 years at least, if you are serious. If not, could be 50, 60, 70, 80. You die, maybe next life you continue. You know? Yeah? Question? I mean, where does the 40 years come from? Is that my question? I don't really know too much. Oh, the 40 years is what, uh, in a book uh, uh, written by the Master Samael Om Veor, he states that the work has to be performed at least in 40 years. Of course, when we apply Kabbalah, we know that those 40 years are related with the 40 years of uh, Israelites in the wilderness, or the 40 years of Jesus, in, uh, 40 days of Jesus in the wilderness as well, of uh, his fasting, or the 40 days of the flood. But 40 is always pointing at Mem, which are the waters of sexuality that we need to purify. Alchemy, alchemy. Well, when you read the Bible, you find that Moses says that uh, the ark was 40 days. Hmm? Okay. And it, it's that symbolic of Mem. It's very different from 40 years. Yeah, well, it's 40. The thing that is 40 means that you have to do the work with the waters, Mem. That's the meaning. Could be 40 years, could be f f many 40s. But that's the symbol of Mem. Well, for a minute, no, uh, that's, that will be really amazing. I would like to see that. That will be in 40 minutes or 40 mean? seconds. Time is a human invention, so, you know, to put a time on that. Well, uh, that time that we're talking about is esoteric time. We're not talking about chronological time here. Every type of time that you find in the Bible is symbolic. The seven days of Genesis are symbolic time. You know, 24 hours, days, you know, it's... Right. It is symbolic. That's why we say it is a symbolic of the letter Mem, the purifying of the waters. So you're telling me that it's not necessarily 40 chronological years in order to achieve what you're talking about? Well, actually, there are many masters that uh, sometimes do it less than the 40 or a little bit beyond 40. It seems like it's like that, you know. Like the Master Samaelon Veor, for instance, he did it in less than 40, almost 40. You know? 
But uh, in order to synthesize the time, he said 40 years or 40 days, right? In order to point that is the purification of the waters, which are the sexual waters. Now, if uh, every, anyone can do it in 40 minutes or 40 hours, that will be applauded. You know? I would like to find that. Man. Um, would you say that uh, having children is animalistic? Yeah, children in an animalistic way it means with the orgasm. All of us are children of fornication. Oh yeah, of course. There are there are two ways. There are two children in the Bible. Children of God and children of men. Mm-hmm. Of course, all of us are children of fornication, orgasm. But uh, when you are in alchemy, you can bring uh, a, a, a soul into your marriage and give it a physical body without mm-hmm. without fornication. Without spilling the seed? Without spilling the seed. I mean, meaning, meaning without spilling seven millions or more of sperms, but you had to spill only one. Because in order to create a body, you need one, you need millions. How many sperms do you need in order to create a physical body? Just one. Just one. So, why are you going to spill millions? Just one? Only one. Well, it is according to the animal generation, but we are talking here about alchemy generation. When you transmute your sexual energy, your sexual semen, your, your sperm is changing as well. It's more mature and very strong. Very easily, and a strong sperm can leave your sexual organs under the command of your own particular monad and to engender your wife without reaching the orgasm. Is easily can escape a sperm in the sexual act by the law, of course, because this doesn't happen just by casualty. You know, mm. yeah, there are many examples in the Bible. You see, for instance, this is written there that Jesus was being born by the grace of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sexual energy. Meaning that Joseph only didn't reach the orgasm, but engendered Mary, the, his wife, or the mother of Jesus, and has the physical body of Jesus. And not only him, also John the Baptist and many other great prophets were born in that way. And why that body is special. Because this is not the outcome of the animal generation, but of the human generation. And for that you have to learn. In the ancient times that was known Women still have that power to release only one of them, naturally. Men had that power to release only one sperm. But now, since we fell into animal generation, we just follow the animal way of uh, multiplying. So we fell into that animal generation. What is your question? So where's the proof of that? Our daily living. Well, the proof, well, uh, the proof is uh, uh, in many books of uh, antiquity, like the Bible that talks, that uh, Adam and Eve in ancient times didn't fornicate or didn't reach the orgasm, or in symbology, of course. And when they reached the orgasm, the spasm, they were delivering with pain, like the animal. Of course, in ancient times, the Lemurian humanity were multiplying themselves without the orgasm, because they were human beings. But since the eating of the fruit, which is the symbol of the orgasm, humanity started developing themselves in animal generation. That's, they lost their powers because the water is the vehicle of the fire. If you ejaculate the water, the fire descends in your spinal column, you lose your psychological powers. You are spelled, in other words, from Eden. That's the symbol. Just a symbol. Being, 
generate every day. So, yeah. But, uh, the, what you're saying doesn't match up with science. Well, not with the science, but objective science, because there are two types of science. Subjective science, which is related with the subjective reasoning, related with the five senses. And everything you're talking about doesn't match up. There's exception to everything in the world. First of all, a male seahorse gives birth to a female. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. talking about animal, animal generation. But we're talking here about alchemical generation, which is precisely when you apply the clues in Tantra and you start... Uh, mutating your body because when you mutate your body and then the transformation happens in many things that are ignored because the sperm and the ovum really hide many secrets that this uh, present uh, science ignore yeah, but I think to get human beings to believe that based on what you're saying is never going to work you know? well this science is not for believing it's for practicing you have to practice it because to be to for 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 believing in order to believe many sects of Christianity or Buddhism and Islam whatever I believe in many things, but with an Gnostic we don't believe. When they ask, "Do you believe in God?" No, we don't believe in God. Right. We also do not believe in God. Yeah. We have to experience that. When we're talking, is because we are experiencing. We are experiencing what we are talking here. I am, I am not just because I read it. I'm taking the Bible and explaining it to you. But I am reading it. Uh, I am experiencing it. I have years and years of experience and, and, and I see it. And I see many things that uh, many people don't see. But because I am doing this. But you, if I did it, you can do it too. But you have to practice it. No, no believing. Of course, in the beginning... Yeah, in the, in the beginning so you can... Last 40 years and, you know, it's a message I just don't think is going to inspire people. You know, just to be bluntly honest. You know, to tell someone, you're saying that you got to experience it, but then before you're saying it takes 40 years to get to that level, you know, so how are you experiencing it if you're not there? No, I don't see that to, to, to take the level or to that level. It takes 40 years in order to do the whole thing. But in order to experience it, three things, you can see it in one month or in one year. It depends on your level of your being. There's a, the development is slow, but you can reach there. I'm not saying, for instance, that I'm fully developed. I am in the process. And because I'm seeing my, my own experience, I, I, I know. It's not that I believe in it. Yeah, Tantra. But not only that. It's also a psychological work. Not only Tantra. Meditation and many other works, practices that we have to perform psychologically. Mm. Tantra is not enough. What happens if one of the partners dies? Oh, then you can uh, get another one. If one of the partners dies, you get another one. Swim to their own... Hmm? If one of the partners the leaves you, for built. instance, you get another one too. No, but, but, but that body haven't been built. What happens? Does it just it goes down and start all over? No, no, no. The internal solar bodies are immortal. Once you build them, they never disappear from you. So if we have about four or five mates, let's say, and you know, they all have that consciousness, and the female, let's just say, or they, they all love you, and you, I'm, I mean, I know right now I'm thinking lust, but I'm saying, let's just say, there's no jealousy there, there's no, you know, that. What do you mean by that? Can you have more than one mate if there's love there? I'm saying because you're not just doing on an animalistic level, there's no more lust and you know, you're not jealous anymore, so, you, you know, let's just say that there's only, if you know, well, there's only one man that's conscious and then there's about 50 women. And just a minute, uh, just, I'm not to, like, just a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, how many uh, is still there? How oh, many? It's, it's finished. So we'll just shut this off and we continue. Oh, all right. Yes, it's finished, right? It's still work. Okay, let us keep talking here. Because the, the recording is one hour. I mean, two hours, right? But it's still, yes, keep talking. Because that, this so recording is going to be. I think he's trying to ask, you know, in other words, if there's a man that is of consciousness, you know, wants to do this tantra type stuff, hmm. why is it only with one woman? Maybe there's multiple women that feel the same way, you know? Because it's a type of science. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a matter of uh, I'm going to do it in my own way. 
You see, it's light. It's, you have to have only one woman. And the woman only one man. Because if this woman that you have is going to go and to commit adultery, and then the, the fire will cross there, and, and instead of building, you make a mess inside. I mean, it's a challenge. But I'm interested, again, I respect what you're saying. You know, I respect, I just, mm -hmm. you know, I can't necessarily agree with a lot of this. I don't mm -hmm. look at life as something that degenerates, you know. Uh, I think it's something that's actually, we're extending life now. We have more information than ever, you know. Just because the youth, you're just looking at a youth, you know, people that are very materialistic. Once you grow out of a certain age, a lot of that disappears anyway. You know, it's just part of maturation, it's part of up. But yeah, you're talking about in the animal way, of course, there are many explanations about that. Well, but yeah, if we are animals, exactly. This is precisely, and it's, it's good, just that statement, is what we are. We are animals. But uh, here, this doctrine, Gnostic doctrine, is in order to teach you how to become human. In order to become human, is not easy. You have to renounce your animal level. And for that, of course, it's a great struggle. This is written in many ways in the Bible and in many other sacred books. The struggle against yourself, right? In order to build the human within. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. If, it's very symbolic, but I think, like I said, if you, you know, if you live as human beings, it's part of becoming a mature adult. You know, it's letting go of certain animalistic. There are certain animalistic things that I think are favorable to the success. But right? Now you are saying, you are naming human being. And since you stated that we are animals, we have to state another also that we are not human beings. A human, hum means the spirit, and man means manas, the mind. The mind under the service of the hum, of the spirit. That's a human being. But an animal is not a human being. An animal acts as instant, follow their instincts. You see, follow this whole humanity. We call it humanity for respect. But really, to find a human is like Diogenes in time of Greece, looking for, with his lantern, a human being, a true human, and he never found it. You know? Because what we are really, what we are is animals. A human being have an astral body, a mental solar body, a causal body, seven bodies created. And it's awakened, not only in this three-dimensional world, but in the fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, and seventh dimension. Completely awakened. Okay, we are finishing now, but uh, we can continue talking here. So you're saying